Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Once again, we are out here at the Witch Farm site and I am pretty happy with the way this is going. I am pretty much ready to get started with the next phase of the Witch Farm, which is going to be covering it up, making it operable, slabbing this entire area, and then figuring out where we are going to AFK and possibly even lighting up some of the caves and oceans around here. A few people in the comments have suggested solutions to that and you might do well to read the comments yourselves and figure out a way of making your witch farm a little bit more time efficient I guess if you don't want to be spending a lot of time swimming around here lighting stuff up but I have long-term plans for this area that would be kind of nice to have a giant perimeter like this after all mostly I just want it to look kind of impressive which is the main reason I think most people do this kind of thing but the utmost efficiency is also going to be a little bit more of a possibility if we do stuff like that and it will let us choose our AFK spot basically anywhere within this radius which is a nice luxury to have I think without having to go up into the sky every time you want your witch farm to operate so I am probably going to do a little bit more than the average player really needs to some folks mentioned that you could say entity cram the witches to kill them which means you don't have to have a giant drop uh, so all you need would be minecarts and a setup kind of like the zombie pigman farm that we have uh, used earlier. Some folks even suggested putting the witches into water streams and then a bubble column which would take them up and drop them from a f uh, 30 block height a little bit further up. Basically preventing any kind of despawning that might happen if they drop into an area below the ocean, meaning your AFK point can be high enough that you avoid all of the uh, spawns in the area around the witch huts. So those are all really good suggestions and I recommend giving one of those a try if they make sense for your world and if you don't have enough time to dedicate to a larger scale kind of perimeter witch hut. And we're not going to do all of that today because like I said, that is quite the task. But I would say the farm right now is sufficient for my needs in terms of the drops we're getting. We could always be getting more. There are always ways you can optimize and make these things more efficient. But personally, I think that it's good enough to at least get the, uh, you know, on off mechanism for the minecart collection stuff and get the storage system out of the way first. So I'm going to fill in the sides of this thing and I'm going to start working on the storage system, which is probably just going to be next door to the farm itself for the, you know, for the purposes of making it relatively compact. <laughs> Not that we don't have space to work with, but it just, you know, simplifies things a little bit. It means that there is a, uh, a one-stop shop for all your witch farming needs. In fact, if we use a bubble column, we could even take it up to an area above the farm where we could climb up to the AFK spot from there. So that might be possible. I think we'll give that a go. So that should be phase one complete. I have basically gone around and slabbed anything and everything that I could <laughs> with these dark prismarine slabs because I kind of wanted to fill in the dark prismarine on the side where the cyan wool was like that. And so I figured I may as well use a little bit more of the same material and it doesn't look all that great. But we're going to be adding some stuff around the outside of this if we want to anyway. It might lower the efficiency of the farm to have blocks above the roof of the farm. But you know what? I don't really care all that much. It's still going to produce a fair amount of witches, which I think it might have been while I was flying around. So that's always good as well. So yeah, anything that isn't redstone circuitry and even the stuff like pistons and redstone blocks, I think still count as solid blocks that hostile mobs could potentially spawn on. The stuff with the redstone dust on it should not, so I'm not that worried about that. However, we could always give this a ceiling of slabs if we wanted to. However, I don't believe that is required at this point. And if I see any mob spawning down there, then you better believe that I will. <laughs> but uh, the rest of this is all slabbed off, and I'm pretty sure we don't have any blocks around the outside that could still spawn stuff either. So we are looking good as far as spawns go, because you might have seen in the footage of the uh, completed witch farm from yesterday's episode that there was still like creepers and zombies and skeletons spawning around here while we were getting witches spawning in the hut itself. So we need to limit that. We need to get rid of that as much as possible, especially considering that is going to be more or less directly underneath our AFK spot. So anything that spawns around here is potentially going to persist if the witches do. I'm looking forward to dealing with these guys the most because much as it is nice to have a Nautilus shell delivered to your doorstep every now and again, and I have tried to attack a couple of guys with tridents who did not give me a spare trident, unfortunately. Drowned farm incoming at some point, I imagine. But uh, yeah, we do need to do some lighting up around here. But first, the storage system, I think, is probably going to be a good idea because the more we light stuff up around here and the more time we spend in proximity of this farm improving the spawn rate, the more drops we're going to get and it would 
kind of be a bad idea to be collecting drops and not be actually collecting them into some kind of storage system. So if I dig down here, I should, yes, there we go. I got to the hoppers and this hopper is currently absolutely full of junk because that's the stuff that was coming through from when I was building the farm in the first place. But it looks like we do have a little bit of gunpowder in here, which means we might even have collected some witches or maybe even a creeper or two that's fallen onto this end with the hopper minecart. So we may even have some witch drops in the system already. Ideally, though, what we want to have here is a bubble column so that we can transport all of the drops back up to the surface seamlessly and collect them in a storage system that's a little bit more convenient than diving down to the bottom of the ocean floor and loading all of those caves would be. Well, in theory, that should be everything pretty much done. I have the storage system up here. Once again, this is above the roof of the farm, which is not the best in terms of optimizing rates, but realistically, we don't really need to worry too much about that. And each of these is now set up with an item filter. Let me pillar up using, I don't know, carpet. How about that? And I will show you the item filters we have for each one of these because witches have seven different drops. So that requires a whole sorting system in and of itself. You could just have all of the drops go into a single chest but I like having things a little bit organized so I can get what I want immediately and not have a chest full of sticks at the end of the day. So what we've got here is one for redstone dust, one for sugar, one for glowstone, one for gunpowder, some sticks, glass bottles and finally spider eyes and that's basically in descending order of usefulness starting with redstone dust which is probably the most valuable thing you can get from a witch farm because you really can't get it many other ways than mining sugar eh, maybe maybe a little bit less useful who can say but i think glowstone dust is also really good to have as a renewable resource here uh, we have gunpowder as well which is also super useful but we have other ways of farming it sticks are kind of useful if we wanted to pump those into an auto furnace setup then we could then we have glass bottles which i guess is a decent thing to have and then spider eyes which are freaking useless and i don't want them so i guess if i wanted to i could always just trash the spider eyes just have them go into a lava pit or something instead of a chest setup like this but having lava around makes me nervous so i prefer not to do stuff like that and all of that is now set up using the same kind of item filters that we typically use in the other storage stuff in this world so i won't go into those right now but it's it's a uh, a fairly simple circuit once you get the hang of it that's all being piped up from down here where we have a uh, a bowel column and a dropper circuit with the clock much in the same way that we set up the one in the creeper farm so once again that one is not something i'm going to explain in full here but i did promise you an explanation of the hopper clock and so I will do that right now. We've used these in a couple of other systems before. We've used it in the auto furnace and in the uh, in the general mob farm. It switches on and off the dispensers at random intervals or quite specific intervals now that I think about it because the whole purpose of hopper clocks is that they transfer items at a fairly slow rate but at a consistent rate between these two hoppers. While a hopper has the redstone block over the top of it, it is effectively locked in that it can't push any items out of it, but it can receive items. And so what happens here is that each time the comparator activates one of these pistons and the comparator on the opposite side deactivates, the redstone block shifts position. And that allows you to lock one hopper and unlock the other. And then once that hopper that's locked fills up with items, the whole circuit shifts and in this case, we can take a redstone signal output from that, and that's what switches on and off all the observers in this farm. The last thing I have left to do is to set up the redstone signal that's going to go down to the collection mechanism and send the minecarts on their way. And we're going to do that fairly straightforward by the use of a, uh, a pretty simple tower of observers and note blocks and that's going to happen in much the same way as the automatic furnace that we set up with blast furnaces where all we need to do is punch a note block and the uh <laughs> signal should travel down all of the observers and end up in the spot we want it so that's weird i, I never see the uh, bottom half texture of shulker boxes all that often so that just looks very strange to me anyway uh let's let's go and set that up really quick it's just going to be a simple tower of alternating observers and note blocks so that really shouldn't take very long at all although i'm going to have to be very careful about where i do that because i just started to dig down here and then i remembered that there is a ravine down there filled with lava so i probably don't want to dig down in that spot maybe we'll put the button on the other side instead 
Okay, so bringing it up that side didn't really make much sense either because uh, I ran into the circuitry for the dropper that's actually pushing all of the items up to the surface. So in the end, I just carved a hole down from the seabed and let the water flow in stifle the lava a little bit and I rode the water column down in the end so I didn't need to worry too much about the lava at all. Once there we've got the uh, whole thing set up to this tower of note blocks and all I should need to do is click on that and if we hop down here we should be able to hear the yep it looks like the redstone circuit has switched on the minecarts are going and any witches that fall through the shifting floor will now end up down here with their drops collected. Perfect perfect now we need to do the hard part and the hard part is going to be a little bit of extra spawn proofing for the area around the farm but you know what it's going to be quite a time consuming thing and how we do time consuming things in this series is in the form of a time lapse Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and personally I just would take any excuse to use that song. It's one of my favorites. Anyway, <laughs> this is uh, the result of about three hours worth of work. It took a long time to do this and I still haven't cleared up all of the dirt that I was using to kind of scaffold the sea lanterns into place. Not to mention that this was only the first layer of what will be many layers if we want to eventually AFK basically anywhere inside of this circle. But having said that, Oh boy, okay, it's uh, it's getting a little bit thundery outside, so I thought I should probably bring myself down from this lightning rod, and look at that, the weather clears up, perfect. All right, let's, let's come down and appraise exactly how many drops we have in here from our witch farm, because I have been AFK for, oh, okay, uh, that could be a problem. Let me go and clean those up real fast. It looks like, yeah, we might need to make a bit of a change to this. I might swap out this water stream for another row of hoppers potentially just like a a single row of hoppers the water can just end there and and catapult all of the drops into a single hopper which can then push everything along the top row here and i wanted to use a water stream because we already have the water flowing up and everything but it looks like some items are getting stuck on the hoppers that's a real shame okay not to worry we will get that sorted out but in the meantime it looks like this farm has been producing a decent amount of drops okay so i have 12 redstone dust that i can put in here i have a bunch of sugar to put in there 
Don't have any glowstone. We have a bunch of sticks and gunpowder. Very good. And spider eyes. Of course, we have a ton of spider eyes. There's more than I can actually put in the hopper at this point. Oh my gosh. Right. And glass bottles. We also have a couple of glass bottles. Let's throw them in there. And then let's come down here and see how this has been going. Because I've been AFK for maybe half an hour while I edited the rest of this episode together. And... Yeah, all right, so we have ourselves four stacks and change of redstone dust. That's very, very good. And redstone is definitely one of the more desirable drops from this farm, as I explained earlier, so that's kind of great. Glowstone, likewise, that is... Yeah, if we if we craft all of that into glowstone, that is 48 blocks of glowstone from a half-hour AFK session. Not bad, considering the nether is a bit of a treacherous place to gather glowstone from. Likewise, we got a bit of gunpowder. That is good because I've used a whole lot of fireworks going from here to my base and back. Wow, that's a lot of sticks. Okay, <laughs> I was not quite expecting that amount of sticks, but there we go. We have them anyway. Glass bottles likewise, and yes, we have a ton of spider eyes. Okay, I might want to get rid of those, but this farm is pretty darn good, you guys. I'm very, very happy with that so far. From a half hour session, yeah, I was expecting to get a, about that much redstone. So we are we are kind of on target as far as this farm goes. And of course, we'll be able to make it even more efficient in the fullness of time should we want to. But for now, I think it's pretty good just to have an AF cable source of redstone. I could go overnight with this and presumably it would at least fill up a double chest, which is not bad going as far as I'm concerned. And of course, we've got a bit of a storage buffer here. We have three double chests. That should be more than enough to take care of a farm like this, which is for the needs of a single player world is pretty darn good, if you ask me. And I think it's been worth putting in the extra effort to light up the area around here if we need to. And all in all, I think the time lapse just came together really nicely. I really like the look of sea lanterns as they're placed in water with those lovely, lovely shaders. But also, I would like to do something with this area. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to look yet, and it's going to involve a very, very long-term project. So this is something we are going to come to and from quite frequently over the course of of the series but for now I think it is probably time to bid this witch farm goodbye. We've spent three episodes on it now and I feel like moving on to something else but for my first witch farm, give or take the fact that I still do still need to fix the uh, the hopper situation up there, and I think I'll probably need to head back to the base for that, so I won't do that right now, but I'll do it off camera anyway. I think this project went pretty well, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed this look at witch farms, and hopefully you'll have fun implementing them in your world if you decide to tackle this kind of project. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.